Well, hi, everyone. I think I have an interesting topic for you all today. It sounds a lot like science fiction, but I think one day it could be a reality. As is uh, almost a daily occurrence, Elon Musk is in the news relative to a potential tunnel project from London to New York. And uh, I'll get into all the details, the different design concepts that are floating around out there and some of the technical difficulties that will occur or be associated with such a project. So this all made the news back in December when Elon Musk issued this tweet talking about a proposed $20 trillion tunnel that gets you from New York to London in 54 minutes. And uh, Musk tweeted that the boring company could do it for a thousand times less money. So $20 billion instead of $20 trillion, which uh, I'm sure he could do it for much cheaper than 20 trillion. I think 20 billion is probably going to be on the low side, but let's see what he has in uh, detail as far as his proposal. I'm hoping that that comes out here in the near future. So the idea of a tunnel linking London to New York is not new. In fact, it was proposed in the 1880s by Michael Verne, son of science fiction writer Jules Verne. As a kid, I used to read all kinds of Jules Verne books and I was just fascinated with the topics that he uh, covered, including uh, trips to the moon. So a lot of commonality or connection between the Verns and Elon Musk in this case. There's been movies made about a potential transatlantic tunnel. This one's from the 1930s, I believe 1935. You can find it on YouTube. So what we're talking about is a tunnel with a length of over 3,000 miles. And of course, it would cross the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, and I'll talk more about that in a bit. A lot of technical challenges here. Average water depth in the North Atlantic is nearly 12,000 feet. So some of the main technical concerns would be overcoming those tremendous water and earth pressures. There's seismicity associated with that Mid-Atlantic Ridge, as well as lateral spreading. That uh, ridge or the, that rift opens up little over an inch each year. It's like a conveyor belt pushing to either side of the ridge. As I mentioned, 20 billion is probably very optimistic for the cost of such a project. Technology that Musk is proposing is to use Hyperloop, and I'll go over that in a minute here. Then there's potential environmental impacts and regulatory challenges trying to coordinate among multiple countries for such a project. So this just shows you the idea of the upwelling of magma from the mantle that pushes up and causes this spreading at the location of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is quite extensive and it of course goes through Iceland which has been the cause of all these recent volcanic eruptions that uh, have made the news. But this is what it looks like uh, in Iceland, this Mid-Atlantic Rift. You can see landmass separating there with a rift valley in between. It's quite scenic though. Here's a video that uh, shows people scuba diving along this rift. So this is a reminder of some of the magma upwelling and, and the intrusion and eruption that's occurred around Grindavik in particular in the last couple of years. So one of the main design concepts, there's really three for this tunnel. One is called an immersed tunnel, where basically you dig a shallow trench on the seafloor and you install these precast tunnel segments. That's a challenge because there's a lot of topographical relief along the floor of the Atlantic. Now there's considerable vertical exaggeration here with this image, but it gives you the idea of the type of features that would have to be crossed with an immersed tunnel concept. So a more conventional tunnel, this is uh, the station in Las Vegas for the tunnels that were constructed by the Boring Company, another Elon Musk company. And uh, there's several miles of tunnel that's been constructed so far with many more planned. And these tunnels have a single lane and they only permit the use of Tesla Model 3 or Model X cars. And when you arrive at the station, you go underground and you're transported by a Tesla or Boring Company employee. Here's a list of their fares, which are a lot cheaper than taxis. I've been to Las Vegas many times. My wife and I typically go at least once a year. And uh, these fares for taxis are about twice as what they're showing for the Vegas Loop. 
And uh, you can have even higher taxi bills. You know, I, every time I fly to Las Vegas and take a taxi, they're asking me, you know, how often I come to Las Vegas. Hoping I would say hardly ever, and then more often than not, they'll try and long haul you, basically take you on a trip twice as long as it should be to get you to your destination. So you want to avoid that. The tunnels for the Vegas Loop were constructed with a tunnel boring machine. This is what this looks like. It's basically got a headpiece with the cutting heads that rotate and the spoil comes back on a conveyor. And then there's precast concrete segments that can be installed as the excavation proceeds. I think this technology also could be used on Mars to construct underground habitat, which I think would be extremely interesting to have a starship transport a tunnel boring machine to Mars. But let's look at examples of massive tunnel projects that have already been executed. This is a recent project in Switzerland, the Gotthard Base Tunnel. It opened in June of 2016 with a length of 57 kilometers or 35 and a half miles. There's twin tunnels. It's the world's longest railway and deepest traffic tunnel. Maximum depth is 2450 meters or 8,000 feet, which is comparable to the deepest mines on Earth. But they had a derailment last year of 16 cars that closed the tunnel for just a little over a year, it just reopened here in September of 2024. So now I wanna get into the main viable, what I think design concepts for a tunnel between London and New York. So what Musk is proposing is a Hyperloop concept. And before I get into the details of all this, I would like to remind everybody I've opened up Buy Me A Coffee. That's a great way to support the channel. If you're so inclined, I've got a link for that in the description. So Hyperloop has cars or pods that travel through low pressure tubes and these cars utilize magnetic levitation propulsion. So the idea is to reduce air resistance uh, in terms of not having contact of the car with a rail and then the lower air pressure. And in this summary from an internet search, they indicate speeds of up to 700 miles an hour. Although what's being proposed for this potential tunnel project, you're going to have to approach 3000 miles per hour to get a transit time of under an hour between London and New York. And this search indicated that the concept for a Hyperloop originated in the 17th century with the invention of the first artificial vacuum. And Musk in 2013 published a white paper describing the Hyperloop. So here's this pressurized car. Really, it's not unlike the Dragon capsule. You know, SpaceX created a crew capsule from scratch and it's been used for a number of years now to transport supplies and people to the International Space Station, well ahead of what Boeing's been able to do, unfortunately. Now, the earliest use of this pneumatic car concept was in New York. This was constructed in 1867 by Alfred Eli Beach, and he did it as a demonstration subway line running on pneumatic power. The line had one stop in the basement of the Rogers Pete building near the old City Hall Station. So the distance is about 300 feet. But uh, unfortunately, he ran afoul of William Boss Tweed. So he was a corrupt politician that it was his way or the highway back in those days. And he wasn't in favor of this project whatsoever. So it didn't operate very long. Now let's get into what I think is the major viable design concept here. And that is a tethered tunnel, a system of tunnels that basically are held in place about 150 to 200 feet below the sea level. So the idea is you have these precast tunnel segments. You have a service tunnel, you have the main tunnel, you've got uh, a variety of mechanical systems for power and ventilation. But you can see that here's the idea, tunnel each direction, tethered to the sea floor, utilizing suction piles. And this is a common construction technology that's used for offshore oil platforms, such as this one. In fact, when I was in graduate school at UT Austin, I did work related to suction piles that would be used to support these type of tethered structures. So a tension leg platform is a vertically moored floating structure, in this case, normally used for offshore production of oil or gas, and is particularly suited for water depths greater than a thousand feet. So here's the idea, you've got these cables, not unlike the cables you'd use for a suspension bridge, that uh, are very strong 
and hold the structure in place with very little allowable vertical deflection. And you want something that's flexible. I mean, you could have impacts from, from whales, uh, perhaps even submarines, but uh, a structure like that that's just submerged 150 to 200 feet below the sea level is vulnerable to sabotage. And we see recently in the news where China's been accused of having various merchant ships drag their anchor and destroy undersea cables for power lines and telecommunications. This has happened in, in Europe and in Taiwan. So to summarize, the leading concept is to have these submerged tunnels that are a couple hundred feet below the ocean surface. You use a hyperloop technology with magnetic levitation of the, on the cars and a massive air pumping system to create low pressure so that these cars or these pods can be shot along, not unlike the pneumatic tubes that you see at your bank. If, if you have one of those banks that has a drive-through where they can send tubes through to your dispenser near your vehicle. So I'll be curious to see if uh, Musk comes up with detailed information uh, about his concept for such a tunnel project. You know, I recently read this book, uh, Reentry, and it gives you a great overview of the company culture at SpaceX. It's a very high performing and high pressure work environment, but it's all driven to achieve very lofty goals, which has been clearly demonstrated by SpaceX's development of the Falcon and now the Starship spacecraft. And uh, this is an interesting book. It wasn't based on any direct interviews with Elon Musk. Uh, this author interviewed dozens of former and current SpaceX employees to give you an idea of the company culture. So I wouldn't dismiss out of hand Musk's contention that he'd be able to muster the resources to do such a project like a tunnel from London to New York. But again, I want to see the technical details presented. If you're interested in this book, I've got a link in the description. So let me know your thoughts on this. Would you, if they ever build such a thing, it could take decades, but would you be willing to go in a Hyperloop car from London to New York? New York? Would you, would you uh, be okay with that? I mean, a hundred years ago, if you asked somebody if they would ride in a pressurized metal tube 30,000 feet above the ground surface, they would tell you you're crazy. But, uh, you know, technology and time marches on. So with that, I'd like to send a shout out to the channel members. I really appreciate your ongoing support, as well as those of you who've provided super thanks. I also would like to thank those of you who have tr contributed to buy me a coffee. That's a really great way to support the channel as well. So I've got a lot of interesting topics coming up for future videos, so please stay tuned.